Hello everyone, this is RaySpace and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim where I'm going to take a look at the Aviation Alice new released by live to air It is about $20 off of flightsim.to or Sim Market. It depends on your currency and all that business. Uh, but it is an all-electric plane and thanks ahead of time to Avangel for making a video on it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even known it was released. So fellow YouTuber Avangel does great videos and did one reviewing this plane. I'm not going to review this plane. I'm doing something completely different. I'm going to test its range, its actual range, because this is an all-electric plane. It has a battery in it, or many batteries, and that means I have range anxiety. And actually, there's a good reason to have range anxiety, because uh, first of all, even though for some reason it says the range is 1,283, it's only said to have 450. It was only planned to have 450, I should say. In actuality, when they tested out this prototype, this was the second prototype of the plane, they only got less than like 250. And so they're, they're aiming for like 250 nautical miles of range with it. And that's not great. It's supposed to be sort of like a business plane. It's got three variants. There's a cargo, there's a commuter, and there's luxury. And its cruise speed is definitely not 370 knots. It's about 300. And so, yeah, th there's some numbers that are questionable over here. It's not a seven-hour endurance. Uh, so I'm going to figure out what it can actually do in the sim as opposed to in real life. In real life, it was insufficient and therefore they have a new version. The original version of the Aviation Alice was from 2019 and it actually had a V-tail and had the engines outboard on the wing, on the wingtips. Uh, so that was a little bit eccentric. I looked at the uh, engines on the wingtips and went, that's not gonna stay. And sure enough, they did not stay on the wingtips. Uh, I did like the V-tail though. I thought they should keep that, but it was also a tail dragger, weirdly enough. Uh, so that all changed and then this is the second prototype and it turned out not to have the performance that they needed and so there's a third one that doesn't have the sleek body it has more of an airliner constant uh, cross-section fuselage which is simpler and uh, it turns out that probably would be more efficient bec and you know that's why airliners do it right uh, so yeah so there's going to be a third prototype to 2024 edition. This is a 2021 edition, I think. So that is the situation. We've got this stuff here, but this is the critical leg for an around the world trip. In other words, uh, you have to be able to make this leg to be able to go around the world. And so that is why I'm testing it out on this leg. And it very clearly shouldn't have the range for this. Uh, in real life, it could barely make a third of the way. Uh, and Presumably, according to the documentation for this plane, it can go about 450 nautical miles, you know, about two thirds of the way. And we'll see. Let's take it outside and find out. So as the blurb says there, made its first successful flight on September 27th, 2022. It says that the propellers are designed to be nearly silent, but we do have some sound with it. And we've got a board here. And humorously, if I do the flight planner, and go to CYYR to say BGBW and tell it the distance is seven, uh, 676 and then go auto on that and even say we have no passengers, two crew and no bags. Efficiency on. Let me uh, keep efficiency off, let's see. Um, battery negative 1%. So it's clearly over, it's clearly not happy with the situation at all. <laughs> um, uh, it's not happy with the situation at all. Let, let, I'd wonder what happens if I tell it it's only 300 nautical. So delete, delete, delete. 300 nautical miles. Then, then it's okay. 74% of battery. But it's, you know, basing it off of the 450 nautical miles, presumably. The, it has settings here. There's the charge battery percent and then this uh, brightness here. And then this airplane uh, for the chocks main door and all that. But again, I'm, I'm not supposed to be doing a review or anything, but it's got, it's got all sorts of features. It's got that as the manual and notes if you want to take them. So it's fancy on the electronic flight bag. And then other information can be found uh, here. Aircraft systems, status. So we can have the status like that. 
like controls, batteries. So that's pretty neat. I'll keep an eye on the batteries, thank you. Alright, well, let me take off with it for the first time and try and get places. So yeah, uh, pretty loud actually outside for a plane that's supposed to be quiet. Very slick and everything. Very nice. And off we go. It is very slow to roll, I'll tell you that. Let me try and cut back. Right now it says range 210 nautical miles. Okay, 245. But I'm not going to trust that. We're going to see what we get. Well, I've managed to, uh, to move the EFB up there. I don't know if that's where I wanted it, but okay. Overall, the details are fairly simple because it's a carbon fiber plane. It's not too much to look at. At least it looks sleek. It's got good functionality, but otherwise, you know, the textures aren't anything special. Technically, it's never exceed speed in the manual it says 370 knots, so there is that. Yep, it's actually pretty loud out here. <laughs> Stall speed is 80 knots. I have not got it at full thrust right now. I've got 75%. We're at the standard climb rate of about 2,000 feet per minute. Okay, we're at 24,000 now. And we're accelerating. Now the range says 375. We'll see how it goes. Got to 400 there. Keep in mind, we've already covered 40 nautical miles. Alright, well, I'm not getting too much better than 390 now. Let me try and go higher. Oh, we've got a 55 knot headwind. <laughs> That's not good. We'd certainly be better off if we didn't have a 55 knot headwind. But I suppose that's sort of fair. The problem we have is that the wind just gets worse as we go higher. So that's not helping anything. So yeah, I'm descending again to try and get less hostile winds. We seem to have three batteries here, one charging, two discharging here. I wonder if turning off the lights reduces the power draw? It doesn't seem to. I mean, the power they consume is probably minuscule compared to the engines anyway. Alright, we're leveling out at 22,000. And that's because the wind is a headwind and it gets worse as we go higher up. So right now, ground speed 270 knots, the headwind is 48 knots, I could show that potentially. Here we go. It's a direct, well it's not a direct headwind, it's sort of a skew like I said, 47 knots there. And. We've almost covered 100 nautical miles, and the remaining range says 360. So right now, we're right on track for that 450. But we could potentially sort of stretch it out on descent if I'm really courageous. Alright, I am now fur along in the flight past the halfway point, past the point of no return, across the sea if you will. Uh, it says that our distance to BGBW is 310 nautical miles, and it also says my remaining range is 115 nautical miles. So, so far we're tracking at a uh, range, total range of something like 470 nautical miles. However, I've had the wind in my face the whole time. Uh, it's not as bad as it was earlier. Uh, it's now just 38 <laughs> knots. But yes, it's been a little bit of a struggle against the wind here. 
And I think if I went higher, it'd be worse. So that's why I've stayed at 22,000 feet. Uh, but if we pick the right day, it'd be better. Now, the question is how well it manages descent and what kind of range I can get if I extend like that. I've kept my indicated airspeed to about 220 knots. Uh, it's a little bit less right now because the ground speed is not so bad. Uh, basically, I've been going at about 270 to 280 knots on the ground speed. And uh, right now we're down to 22% on our battery and uh, it says my flight time remaining is 25 minutes. It's all water here, so I'm guessing I'm going to end up making a splashdown. But when you take a look at the wind situation, you can also see why if the wind situation was different, uh, maybe if I had a tailwind on me, uh, then maybe I would have gotten to where I was trying to go. So... The real one might have a lot of range anxiety, but this one, I don't think it'd be suitable as a replacement business jet for the United States, but maybe for Europe, not too bad, uh, if they can get the range like this, as opposed to what they had in the real second prototype. Well, batteries 2 and 3 are low, it says. They're down to 11%. Well. Let me just start descending very, very judiciously. How about that? Let's say 500 feet per minute. Apparently cruising right along, not a care in the world. Mind you, we, we, we aren't carrying a whole lot of stuff inside. So there is that. Now, what does it think our weight is here? It's still got 1,540 pounds of payload. So currently during this descent, I have it at uh, 113 kilowatt hours per 100 nautical miles. About 30 minutes of flight time, it says, and we're descending very gradually. If you take our height uh, at this descent rate, we would take 40 minutes to actually descend all the way. So probably I should try to throttle down to 40 minutes flight time, but boy, we're getting slow. Maybe 100 kilowatt hours would be good. We're still not getting there. But there is actually a little bit further inland than over, over on this side. That's a seaport, unfortunately. But maybe we can sort of make land at Greenland? I don't know. Right now the wind is more like this. It's still a headwind, but more of a crosswind. And not as strong. 33 knots now. Alright, well I've got 2% of the charge remaining. 30 nautical miles it says. It says 10 minutes of flight time. And we are 144 nautical miles away from BGBW. And we're not approaching the coast. It's a lot of clouds out there. And this is what we look like. So I'm going to find out how well it glides, but not from a great height. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to be... At uh, 5,000 feet, probably when. Well, uh, maybe we'll be even lower. Well, I'll try and hold 5,000 while the charge. Well, now it dropped the flight time to 5 minutes, so. Yeah, about 5,000 feet. I guess we'll also test the splashdown characteristics of it. Will it instantly give me a black screen, or is this a good seaplane? <laughs> I mean, it's at least its engines are sort of high mounted. That's nice. Okay, I don't actually want the autopilot to level out here. Ten kilowatt hours, nine kilowatt hours now. I think battery one up there is hopefully just for operational stuff like keeping the displays on and maybe lowering the landing gear. Okay, they say zero kilowatt hours, and now the main one is discharging. And everything's in red now. 
Well, I, I do need information. I guess that information is not being provided anymore by the system. Well, I've got that. We are 118 nautical miles away from BGBW. It does not seem like I can lower the flaps right now. So without the main batteries charged, I can't lower the flaps. Sound of the engines doesn't really change now that we have no charge. Still down here, 25 knot crosswind. You can sort of see that. Okay, now the sound of the engines changed. We're going more sideways <laughs> than normal. When is it actually going to touch down? Oh! Alright, splashdown. Nice vertical speed. 86 knots. Landed at GW07, apparently, it thinks. I, I doubt that. Is that? Yeah, that's that one over there. That's a long ways. We we're a long ways away from GW07. However, we're floating. So, a win on that. Um, 110 nautical miles left. So, judging from the original plot of 676 nautical miles, I made uh, 566 nautical miles. So, that's the unsafe distance. No, I did face a win. I, I swear if I had a tailwind, I could have gotten there. But uh, yeah, so without reserves or anything like that, there you have it. 566 nautical miles uh, maximum like this in these conditions. So I, I don't know if you would want this plane or not, but at least hopefully that assuages your range anxiety about having an electric plane. <laughs> you know what it does now. Alright, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.